What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction for a UFC 258. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Jillian Robinson versus Miranda Maverick. To me, neither one of these chicks is great strikers. They're both grapplers. I think Miranda has the wrestling advantage, but I think Jillian has the better grappling overall. I think the reason Jillian lost her last fight was just because... Kind of like a lot of the reasons why she's lost her last couple fights is just when chicks have a big strength advantage over her, she has a hard time moving around on the ground. I don't think Miranda has that same type of strength advantage. I think even though she has the wrestling advantage, like I said, the thing that fucks over Jillian is when she just is at a massive strength disadvantage. And I think if this fight's on the ground, I'm always going to favor um, Jillian Robinson if she's able to fight someone who's about her strength level. So I say Jillian eventually reverses position and wins by submission with an armbar or rear naked choke just because I think she's a better grappler. Next is Gabriel Green versus Philip Rowe, and to me, Philip Rowe really did not impress me that much in his Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series fight. I felt like he really, that fight should have been stopped a couple times in the first round. I feel like he basically just got really lucky. The fight didn't get stopped, the guy gassed after a really hard first round, and then he came back and won. Gabriel Green, to me, in his UC debut, you know, he looked solid. His striking looks good, and I know he's primarily a jiu-jitsu guy anyway. I don't know why he wasn't grappling, but, um... To me, what I saw to Gabriel when he fought uh, Mike, uh, the, the the Mexican dude who, who beat Tim Means and a few other really good guys, um, I think it's Mike Rodriguez, you know, he looked solid in that fight. You know, even though he lost, I thought he looked good in every single round. And like I said, I he didn't use his grappling at all, which was weird because he's primarily a jiu-jitsu dude. I just, I prefer his skill set over Phil's. I was not impressed at all with Phil's fight on the contender series. So I'm leaning towards Gabriel. I think he either wins by decision or submission. Next is Ricky Simone versus Brian Kelleher, and to me, this is almost like the same fighter fighting themselves. They're both primarily like striker wrestlers with some decent chokes. I think Simone's a better wrestler, but I think Kelleher's the better grappler overall. With the blip, the striking's pretty much the same. I just think Kelleher hits harder. Um, I'm leaning towards Kelleher just because I think that if it's on the feet, I think he's just going to do more damage with his hands, and I do feel like his guillotine is always there. I think if Simone gets caught in that guillotine once, Kelleher is probably going to win. So I'm leaning towards Kelleher to win by either um, knockout or submission. I think if it goes the distance, though, it's going to lean towards Simone. But I do think it's going to be a close competitive back and forth fight. <laughs> Next is Andrew Enwell versus Chris Gutierrez. And to me, this fight is pretty much going to be what happened when Andrew Enwell fought his teammate. Um... Uh, the other Mexican dude, I can't remember his name, but that, that other Mexican dude I thought beat the shit out of Andre Enwell. I thought he won all three rounds pretty clearly. And somehow, Andre, Andre um, won a split decision, and nobody thought he won that fight. I think Chris Gutierrez fights just like um, his training partner. He's not, he doesn't hit as hard, but their striking style is basically the same thing. And I feel like that's pretty much what this fight's going to be. Is It's going to be the exact same fight. It's just not going to be as dominant. That's my fear, though, is that because Andre won the first fight, you never know how the judges might screw Chris over. But as long as the judges aren't stupid, Chris should win this fight by decision. I think that's going to be the same striking fight, just Andre's not going to be getting hit as hard. That's the only difference. Next is Poliana Vienna versus Ma Mallory Martin. And to me, this fight could go either way. Both these chicks are grapplers, primarily. They have some striking. They're both just okay. I'm leaning towards Poliana Vienna. I think her jiu-jitsu is a little bit better. I don't have much to say about this fight because I think they're just really mediocre. But yeah, I think that Vienna is going to win by submission. Next is Bell Muhammad versus Diego Lima. And I see this fight kind of being a lot like the Ricky Simone Kelleher fight where it's like their styles are pretty close. I think Diego has better power and better submissions. But Muhammad's just a way better wrestler. This one's different because I really want... Diego to win because he's more exciting but I just feel like the opposite of Kelleher like he doesn't have the same type of wrestling Kelleher has where I feel like he has a chance to beat someone who has a much better wrestling game I don't think that Diego has the type of power to keep Muhammad off of him I think Muhammad can recover from a big shots too I just see Muhammad smothering him for three rounds with the wrestling I hope that doesn't happen I hope Diego is able to catch him with like a submission or a punch <laughs> But realistically, I just see Bella Muhammad dominating with the wrestling. As much as I want Diego to win and as much as I want to pick him, I just can't. I don't see him winning this fight. I don't think, like I said, it's the exact same thing with the Kelleher fight, but Kelleher has the wrestling to win that fight. Diego doesn't. And because of that, 
I'm leaning towards Bella Muhammad to win by decision. Next is um, Ro Rofando Vieira. I can't say his first name. Versus um, Anthony Hernandez. And for a second, I got confused with the guy at w lightweight, but I forgot that there's the same guy at middleweight. Um, to me, Anthony Hernandez has not looked like up to his expectations. I think a lot of people thought he was going to be this really badass dude, but to me, he just kind of comes across as like an okay striker with solid like wrestling and pretty decent cardio. I think Vieira is just way too good of a grappler. I think that this fight's going to hit the ground eventually. Whether Vieira is on top or bottom is regardless. He, he can submit Hernandez wherever this fight is. And I don't think Hernandez is such a good wrestler that he can completely stop this fight from hitting the ground. And because of that, I'm leaning towards Vieira. I also don't think Hernandez has a huge advantage on striking. He's definitely the better striker. But I think that Vieira is good enough to get this to the ground. I think once it's there, he's eventually going to catch Hernandez in a submission. So I'm leaning towards Vieira to win by sub. On to the main card, the first fight is Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. And this fight to me is a coin flip. It's kind of like Bobby Green's wrestling and striking versus Miller's jiu-jitsu and striking. <laughs> They're pretty f really close in almost every aspect of the game. I think Green probably has a slight advantage in cardio, but that's about it. Um, I'm having a really hard time picking this fight just because I think that it really could go either way. I honestly think it might go the distance. It might be a split decision. But I'm leaning towards Miller. The main reason I'm picking Miller is because I feel like Bobby Green is just going to strike with him. And I feel like Miller doesn't really get outstruck that much. Like, it's pretty rare. I think, you know, Dan Hooker knocked him out, but th I think that was a height thing more than anything. It's just he was so much taller than Miller that he caught him with that knee. But most of the time, when Jim Miller's just straight up striking with dudes, it's pretty close. Like, Pettis kind of outstruck him a little bit, but that fight was still super competitive all three rounds. I'm just leaning towards Miller because I feel like if Bobby Green just chooses to strike with him, I think Miller's leg kicks are going to be the biggest difference. I think that's what's going to help him out as the fight goes. And because of that, I think he's going to slightly edge out a really close decision. And I think this is probably going to be fight of the night by leaning towards Jim Miller. Next is Maki Pitolo versus Julian Marquez. And to me, I don't know why people are so high on Julian Marquez. I mean, like, he had that good fight on his Dana White to his neck contender series, but then he's 1-1 one one in the UFC. I mean, he's a good striker, but that's about it. I think he has some wrestling and some grappling, but it's not, like, super amazing. I think Maki Pitolo is kind of the same way. He has some wrestling and some jiu-jitsu, but he's primarily a striker. But my biggest thing is Maki Pitolo has been fighting way more regularly. I think that time off does matter. I think that the fact that Maki's fighting good dudes, and he's been fighting, you know, a couple times a year the last few years, as where Julian's been out. I think that makes all the difference in a fight where two guys have almost the exact same style, and, you know, they fight pretty similarly. I'm leaning towards Maki mainly because, like I said, I think the activity is the biggest difference. Because other than that, these guys are pretty similar. I'd say the first guy that lands the big shot is probably going to win the fight because they're both just big, heavy punchers. But I'm leaning towards Maki. I just assume his timing is going to be better because of how often he's been fighting. So I'm going to lean towards Maki to either edge out a decision, like a 29-20 decision, or he eventually catches Julian and wins by knockout. Next is Kelvin Gaslam versus Ian Heinish. And... This is another two fight, uh, fight where two guys fight pretty similarly. I'd say the only difference is Ian uses his wrestling a bit more than Kev Kelvin does. But um, to me, this fight's really close. I think that people are giving Kelvin way too much credit. I think that, you know, I think there until show, guys are kind of figuring out how to strike with him. If you can really close that space, he, he has a really hard time striking in close. I think that he has a hard time striking when guys fight really far on the outside and really close on the inside. And, you know, Israel kind of showed that because he was able to land a lot of shots on the outside. And then Darren Till showed that when any time Kelvin got close, he just instantly clinched with him. I don't think Ian Heinish is at the level of Darren Till striking-wise to kind of do that. But I do think he's good enough with his wrestling to kind of off-base Kelvin. I, I am leaning towards Kelvin, but I won't be shocked at all if Ian Heinish is able to kind of box from the outside and use his wrestling to kind of you know, close the gap with the striking and then just make this really close fight. I do think Ian Heinish has the better cardio too. But um, either way, I think this fight's going to be really close. Like I said, these guys fight very similarly. They're both striker wrestlers. They both have really good takedown defense. They both have good takedown offense. Like I said, the only difference is Ian uses his wrestling more often. I'm leaning towards Kelvin just because I think his hands are a little bit better, and I think that's what's going to save him in this fight. Because if Ian Heinish was a better striker, 
I would be picking him. But I'm leaning towards Kellen because I think his boxing is better. And I think he'll be able to kind of do damage in the clinch anytime Ian is shooting for takedowns. And I think Kelman will just win this decision really closely. Next is Macy Barber versus Alexi Grasso. And for me, the biggest thing is, I don't know why this is the co-main event. I think Green versus Miller should be the co-main event. I think this should probably be the first fight on the main card. It does deserve to be on the main card. They're two ranked chicks. I don't know. Like, people are giving this fight a lot of hate. But it just doesn't... This shouldn't be the co-main event. It should either be Kelvin versus Heinish or Green versus Miller. And I would pick Miller versus Green. But um, either way, I think these chicks are both really good. But my biggest thing is, I remember when Macy fought J.J. Aldrich, and I saw a really technical striker just dance around her for a round and a half before Macy caught her with a big punch. I feel like you take away that one big punch, and J.J. Aldrich was lighting Macy up. And I think Alexa Grasso has the striking to do the exact same thing J.J. did. I don't think Macy Barber is this insanely good wrestler. She's powerful, but it's not like she has amazing wrestling. It's primarily her striking. And it's not like her striking is as good as some of these super technical chicks. She just hits really hard. It's not that she's a bad striker either. I just think she's, like, above average. And because of that, I just see Alexa Grosso kind of dancing around her for three rounds like JJ did. I think other than Barber landing that big punch that puts Grosso on her ass, I just see Grosso, you know, hitting her, getting in and out, and winning a dominant decision. And, yeah, that's just all I have for that. Next is Kamar Usman versus Gilbert Burns. And... I see this fight going one of two ways. Either Kamaru Usman dominates this fight, or Burns dominates this fight. I really don't know why, but for some reason I just don't see this fight being close and competitive. I think one guy is either going to be much better than the other. And um, I don't know why I feel like that, but I just do. I think that Burns is either going to be lighting him up early and knock him out or submit him, or Usman's just going to dominantly wrestle him against the fence for five rounds. It's really hard to pick because, I mean... You know, Burns has been looking so good, but Usman really hasn't. Other than the fight with Colby, you know, I thought Colby was winning that fight before he got knocked out, but that's the only fight where I think Usman's lost a round. Like, I mean, there's no other fight I can think of where I thought Usman, you know, lost a round. Maybe that first round with fucking Masvidal, but that's about it. Um, And yeah, I think that Burns, you know, he looks really, really good. The fact that he was able to beat up Tyron Woodley the way he did really impressed me, but Tyron Woodley... You know, I never thought was that good. I just think that he was able to catch a lot of people because of the way he fights. Um, I, like, this is the thing. I want Burns to win, and I'm slightly leaning that way just because I do think his striking is a little bit better. And the biggest thing is he definitely hits way harder. He has way more one-punch knockout power. And the other thing is I think if this fight hits the ground, he is the better jiu-jitsu grappler. So I'm leaning towards Burns to get a finish. I think his cardio has greatly improved since he moved over to that new team. And I do think he just catches Usman with something eventually, either a punch or a submission. Like I said, I won't be shocked at all if Usman just wins a decision, but I am leaning towards Burns. I think Burns is going to catch him with either a punch or a submission, and he's going to finish him in probably the first three rounds. That's my guess. I do think this going to, like I said, it's either Burns finishes him early or Usman just dominates. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.